not going to get up on the stage, but I just wanted to welcome you all tonight. Um, my name is Sarah Lynn Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Career Development Center. And um, we appreciate you coming out tonight and taking part in this workshop. And it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker. Um, we're going to have a speaker for probably the first 30 minutes, and then we'll have um, a panel. And our speaker will be part of that panel. And then we have two other panelists, and I'll introduce them. And then you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and talk with them for about 20 or 25 minutes, OK? Um, Mr. Lynn Bradley is the Division Chief, Redstone Arsenal Civilian Personnel Advisory Center. It is. That's an exciting isn't it? <laughs> the Advisory Center provides HR services and support to our workforce, the Arsenal. Yeah. So welcome, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. I'm going to turn down these lights just a little bit. Just so you can see the slides uh, better. Is that good for everybody? All right, so um, I'm going to spend about the next 30 minutes or so uh, talking about some uh, tips and techniques uh, for resume writing, as well as the program that you'll use if you want to apply for federal jobs, which is usajobs.com. Um, it's, it's very easy to use. The information that I'm giving you is, is, uh, is, is very helpful if you're applying to jobs, not only with the federal government, but also outside of the federal government as well. Um, I work at... I work at the Civilian Personnel Advisory Center, and this is what our organization structure looks like. Uh, our mission is to recruit, develop, and sustain a professional civilian workforce, um, and that's really the bottom line. Uh, my office is responsible for filling uh, the majority of the positions here on the Redstone Arsenal. So when you apply for a position, your application comes to my office, and we screen it to make sure that you're qualified for the position before we refer you to a selection manager which will then determine if they uh, feel that you're a good candidate and that they want to interview you. And then if you're interviewed and they select you, that referral list is going to come back to us. And then we're going to be the ones that make the job offers to you. And then we're also the ones that are responsible for bringing you on board, making sure your pay is set appropriately, talk to you about your benefits um, and compensation packages that you get, um, and any, anything dealing with pretty much your first day of work to make sure that you're ready to get into your new job. Uh, we're structured with uh, the director's office. We have three divisions, Division A, Division E, and then a Management Employee Relations Division. Uh, I'm a division chief over Division E, which has two staffing branches, which is around, um, around I'd say probably 25 personnel that work for me, um, as well as a classification branch. The classification branch is responsible for classifying all the position descriptions. Because we want to make sure if you're doing a particular job that you're being compensated appropriately for that job. So, uh, as I said before, the first thing that you're going to do if you're interested in a job in the federal government is you've got to go find that job that's out there. And the federal government uses usajobs.gov in order to um, post announcements out there for career opportunities um, for current uh, employees of the organization or the federal government as well as private citizens that want to uh, come into the federal government. And when you go to this website, uh, that's the first page that you're going to see. And you're going to have to set up your profile. You're going to set up an account, just like you do with uh, most websites nowadays. You're going to establish a profile. So right in the middle, it says Create Profile. It's going to walk you through. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes to fill out everything on that. They're, they're looking for your name, uh, what kind of jobs are you interested in, uh, your address, um, just a lot of different demographic information um, to sort of set up a profile for you. And then you'll notice that there's three, three tabs underneath there. The first one is create a USA Jobs profile, and there's uh, four icons there. They're not active icons, they just let you know what it is that you could do if you decide to set up a profile. And then the next one is the federal application process. So if you have any idea that, that you're wanting to apply for a job, the best thing to know is how is the application process, how does it work? And if you can figure out how it works, that's usually 50% of the fight right there. Because uh, as with most government agencies, it's not easy, okay? It's, it's, it's got a lot of different steps involved with applying for federal positions. 
So the best thing you can do is go there next and then look at the application process. And it has different tabs that you can select and it'll provide you with the information for each step from setting up your profile all the way to applying to a job. And then the next one, it, it has a tab is Explore Opportunities. With Exploring Opportunities, if you click on that tab, this is something that's going to come up. And if you're a current student or a recent student that's graduated, this is great information. Um, it says student and recent grads, uh, which are what y'all will apply to most of the time. How many veterans do I have in here? So I got three veterans, okay. Um, and there's different opportunities for veterans because of veterans' preference that's been established decades ago. Um, but there's also a great information out there on the website that talks about veterans' preference and how it applies <coughs> to positions. So if you select the student and recent graduate tab, it's going to take you to this page. This is an opportunity for you to get information concerning the different programs that are available that you could apply for. And there's really two programs that are primarily used. There's only two that's really used on the arsenal. And those are listed at the bottom, the internship program and the recent grad program. An internship program deals with um, you actually still being in school and still seeking your degree. And it really doesn't matter when, um, it doesn't matter if it's your first year or your last year, you're still considered a current student. So that is one way to come into the federal service, is that you qualify under the Pathways program as an intern, which is a current student. Now, um, I have recently hired, they just started this week actually, three interns within our Civilian Personnel Advisory Center. And they're current students, but they work full time because they're doing their classes either online or after duty hours. So it, if that works, that's great. But also there's the flexibility, if you're taking classes during the day, uh, then you can go to a part-time schedule. It really depends on what uh, the manager is willing to do when it comes to the flexibilities of your schedule. But if you're a current student, that's the priority. We want you to maintain a good GPA, we want you to graduate, um, and then we want to co hopefully convert you to a permanent position upon graduation. So um, that's the first way to get in, is as an intern. Also on the arsenal, we're about to start working on our summer hire program. Each summer we hire sometimes hundreds of students um, that are current students, anywhere from high school students up to students that are uh, completing their master's degree. And we bring them on post and we put them in uh, temporary positions for around 90 to 120 days. And that gives us an opportunity to develop relationships with the students as well as execute our mission with uh, the student population. Um, and it's a win-win for everybody at that point. Um, and it gets your foot in the door as a student to see what, what kind of work you may enjoy as well as to develop relationships. Because sometimes those relationships will blossom into a permanent position for you if you do a really good job. So the other program that we use often is called Recent Graduates. Recent graduates is someone that's graduated within the last two years, all right? Um, and those, those are permanent, uh, not permanent, they're full-time positions that have the potential to convert into permanent positions. And it's, it's a great opportunity for anyone that's recently graduated. Uh, we fill a lot of positions out here through that program, all right? Any questions on that? All right, so we're going to talk more now about what your resume should include, and we're going to talk about some of the things your resume should not include. Uh, the key, the biggest and most important thing that I can explain to you about a resume is that when you write your resume, um, and I see it happen all the time because we, we scan resumes every day, um, you know, sometimes hundreds in a day. Keep in mind, sometimes hundreds of people are applying for the same job you're applying for. And when I say hundreds, I literally mean hundreds. Okay, so you have to be able to stand out among the crowd. And one of the best ways you can stand out among the crowd is to not talk about what you do or what you've done in the past with your careers or with your school or any extracurricular activities. It's about how well you did those things. Because a lot of the competition you have is simply talking about a position description. What were they responsible for? But very seldom do they really put in their resume how well they did it. What were the accomplishments? What did you do for the, the organization that you were servicing at that time? So if you're able to put that kind of information in there, that's going to help you float towards the top when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes to managers looking at your resume and determining if they want to hire you or interview you and then hire you. 
All right, so the first one is your, your resume has to clearly articulate how your skills and experience align to the selection criteria divide, uh, defined by the job opportunity announcement. When you go out and you're looking for jobs on USA Jobs, and you find a job that, that you're interested in, and if it's a student type job, if it's an intern or recent grad, and you fit those qualifications and requirements, you really have to read the job announcement. And you have to determine, at the end, am I qualified for this job? There's a section within each of the job announcements, and it talks about what we put, what's labeled as specialized experience. You must meet the specialized experience when you apply for that job. All right. If you don't meet the specialized experience, you won't be referred to the selection manager in order to get an interview and potentially a job because you're not qualified at that point. All right. Or if, or if you're applying to a recent graduate announcement, but you're still in school, you're not going to get referred because you don't fit that criteria and vice versa. Okay. So always read the job announcement. Tailor your resume to that particular job. The good thing about USA Jobs, it allows you to, uh, to store up to five resumes inside of the program itself that you can modify, you can tweak, you can do all kinds of stuff to, to showcase your talents uh, to the HR office first, because we have to determine if you're qualified, but then especially to the manager who's going to determine if they should interview you or not or offer you a position. Uh, the next one, always tailor your resume. I talked about that. Um, think about which keywords you need to add based on the skills required for the position. Just one key word can sometimes make a difference. Used to, our, our army system was called Resumex. And the only thing it really did was it searched out keywords within your resume. And if some of the keywords that management came up with was teamwork, communication, um, meeting milestones or deadlines, then it would go out there and it would pull that information. And then that, that's what would determine the referral going to the manager. Well, now it's, it's not done that way. You have to read the announcement, you have to tailor your resume, you have to upload your resume, and then you have to answer an assessment questionnaire, and then from there, you have to make sure all of your other supporting documentation is uploaded. If you're a veteran and you're applying through veteran's preference, you have to make sure your DD-214 is there. If you're a disabled veteran, you have to have the VA memo. If you're a student and it's an education requirement, you have to upload your transcript. So there's a lot of things that you have to do just to get over that first hurdle to make sure your package is complete when it comes to our office before we send it to the manager. So you want to make sure that when you're writing your resume, look at the job announcement, look at the questionnaire, and see what are they looking for for this person to have in order to fulfill the duties of the job. And then pull some of those keywords out and make sure they're applicable to your particular history, your work experience, or your academic uh, experience, and place those in there so it stands out. Okay. Um, then uh, uh, study the announcement and focus on the requirements, skills, and qualifications. If at the end of that, that research, by looking at the announcement, uh, you get to a point and you say, I don't think I'm qualified for this, then I would suggest that, that you, you don't apply for the position. Because if you're, if you're applying for a position that you're not qualified for, you're taking up your time, okay? Um, and you're going to take up the office that I work in, you're going to take up their time. Um, by reviewing resumes that aren't qualified to begin with, all right? But there's a lot of jobs out here that I'm sure that you're going to be qualified for. Um, the big thing is don't ever give up, all right? Just continue to apply for those positions. Um, sometimes it takes a while uh, before you can actually get in, all right? Um, so the HR office and the selected officials often receive dozens and even hundreds. I talked about that. I, I mean hundreds like it's not uncommon nowadays for us to have to review 500 resumes for one job and that takes a long time to do um, the first step involves quickly skimming through the submissions and eliminating candidates who clearly are not qualified um, so when when you're doing your resume you need to look at it and ask the following questions can a hiring manager see my main credentials within 10 or 15 seconds there, there's two ways that you're going to be offered to, to um, put a resume out there for managers to look at. One is uploading a resume, and then one is building a resume. I always encourage you to build the resume within the, res uh, the USA Jobs Resume Builder. And the reason is, is because our managers out here, they're used to seeing that format. And it gives you more of an opportunity to showcase your talents. 
How many pages is, is a common resume nowadays? How many pages? Two. One or two pages, right? Okay. Um, your competition, um, if they're using Resume Builder, they're not limited to one or two pages. All right? It's not uncommon. I mean, usually we see resumes that are 10 pages long. Okay? Um, and that's because some people have a lot of work experience, education, some extra activities, and they're able to showcase those. So don't feel for a federal job that you're limited to two pages. Okay? Your competition um, is really showcasing their talents and all of their experiences. So I would encourage you to, to build a resume. Uh, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. And there's a, there's a way that I'll show you that you can just upload a resume that you already have. All right? But they need to be able to see your qualifications, and you need to stand out at the beginning. All right? Because if they're going through that many, they're working them pretty fast. All right? Um, does critical information jump off the page, especially when it comes to your experience? All right? Does it jump off the page and say, hire me? You know, I have uh, two children. They're adult children now. And, um, you know, at 16, they want to get a job because I'm not going to pay for everything, right? So um, I would take them around and let them put in applications. But one thing that I would do is I, have, I, I, I encourage them, what makes you any different than any other application in the stack? Well, I don't know, Dad. What is it? Well, well think about it. What can you do? Well, if everybody's just putting in a resume, I, I mean an application, what if you attach a resume also to your application? Even when they're skimming through that, that's going to even feel different to a manager. And that always worked out pretty successfully to them. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're filling out for, for job, um, job resumes and job positions, that yours has to stand out somehow, some way, because there's so many out there. Um, do I effectively sell myself on the top quarter of the first page? You've got to sell yourself, all right? Um, veterans are usually the worst ones at this. Because, um, because we're sort of humble by what it is that we've done in the service, that um, we, we usually don't sell ourselves well. But if you don't sell yourself, who else is? All right, there's no one else writing your resume for you. There's no one standing there that's gonna give the resume and speak on your behalf to a hiring official. So you have to do that on your own. Uh, key selling points need to be uh, prominently displayed on the resume and directly address each question asked in the as assessment section. When you go to a job announcement on, in USA Jobs, usually over on the right-hand side, um, there's a tab that talks about the, um, the assessment, all right? And then there's a link. You can click on that link of the, the assessment, and it will bring up the assessment in PDF format, okay? When you do that, you're going to get to see the questions that they're going to require you to answer in order to apply to the position. When you see those questions, you need to use, you can print it out, you can look at it, however you want to do it. All right? I usually would print it out and put it next to my resume. And I would say, okay, what skills do they need that I currently possess? And if I currently possess those skills, do I need to, you know, um, do I need to make it more clear within my resume so it stands out to the selecting official that I'm not only qualified, I'm the best person for the job. Uh, if you were a recruiter looking at a resume, which of the following entries would impress you more? Would it be rogue news releases or rogue 25 new re news releases in a three week period under daily deadlines? Which one's better? It's the second one, right? It's very obvious. You have to be able to explain that. If you can quantify or qualify that you have provided these types of services or skills to an employer by using that kind of data, that's going to stand out. Okay, That's going to be an ex excellent way that they can see, not only did you write news releases, here's how well you did it. Okay? Uh, numbers are powerful resume tools that will help your, your accomplishments draw the attention they deserve from prospective employers. Try to put some numbers to it. If you're saving your company money, if, uh, if you're able to save them time by developing some improvements uh, within processes or procedures, then, then you know, try to express that and communicate that clearly within your resume. All right, so think time. You know, time is money. What's interesting is that the government doesn't really think about money very much because where do we get our funding from? We get it from you guys, right? You're paying my salary. You're paying for this facility. You're paying for you know, the equipment that I need. You're paying for a lot of different things. Um, so we don't really think about money that much. All right? I'm not saying that, that we don't save money where we can, 
but I think that we could also say that we could save more money than what we do. Um, but if you're able to save your organization money, or if you're able to save them time, that's good. Um, that's what the government needs. We need to be able to execute things quickly, efficiently, and to a high standard. Um, so here are some time-oriented examples. Assisted with twice monthly payroll activities, ensuring employees were paid as expected and on time. All right, that's important, payroll. Uh, attended high school basketball games, interviewed players and coaches afterward, and composed a 750-word article, articles by an 11 p.m. deadline. So that shows that you can get the job done and you can meet your uh, deadline and expectations. And then the last one, suggested procedures that decrease average order processing time from 10 minutes to five minutes. You're cutting that in half. That is a huge deal, all right? So think about those things. You know, you're, you're doing jobs, you're going to school, um, and some of you may not have ever had a job. Um, you, you're you know, coming into the workforce fresh, but trust me, you do other things and other activities in church groups, within your communities, uh, within your home. Um, if you're a stay-at-home mom, who, who would ever tell you that, that you don't have a job? No, you're doing stuff. You're budgeting. You're still, you know, taking care of your uh, your household needs, maintenance needs. You're, you're doing a lot of different things. You have to really just think about what it is that you do, and then see if you qualify for these positions. But then make sure it's clear on your resume. All right, some things that you do not include. All right, it is important that you don't include these things because I would hate for any of you to be discriminated against right out of the gate. Okay. So some of the things you don't uh, provide is any classified or government sensitive information, uh, social security numbers, personal or sensitive information which would allow someone to discriminate against you, such as your age, gender, religious affiliation, and so forth. Um, and do not provide a, photo a photograph of yourself. Remember, if, if, if you include any of those things and it gets to my office and we refer you to the selecting official, and they have 50 applica applications that they have to go through and figure out who they're going to interview. I would love to say that we don't have people that discriminate, but we do. Every, it's, it's in society. The Army is no different than any other society. But try to eliminate that from an issue when you can. All right? um, if you, I had someone apply to a position of mine when I worked in Nashville, um, and she put on her resume that she was voted uh, Miss Black Clarksville in you know, 2006. That just told me that, that she, she's a black girl looking for a job. I ended up hiring her, but at the same time, someone could easily discriminate and you would not know it, okay? They would simply put your resume to the side and not interview you, and you would have no idea that that took place. All right, it's the same thing with your age, all right? Uh, you know, once, once you reach a certain age, some people think that you're on the downward slope, right? Um, but that's not the case. So don't give them the opportunity to discriminate against you. When you fill out the education portion within USA Jobs, I always encourage people to look and make sure that when they put a year down, that it's recent and it's relevant. All right. If you if you graduated like I did in 1986 from high school, and I put that on my resume, what do they what can they figure out just like that? My age, right? And they can discriminate against me before I even have an opportunity. So if if you graduate from you know uh, college or high school recently within the last 10 years, then I say put it on there. But anything other than that, just put down your degree. It's okay. Put down where you went to high school. It shows that you have an, an education. That's fine. But once you start giving them the years, they can start doing the math. Okay? Aren't there questions mandatory during the application? They ask the dates of graduation. Um, they, they may, but you don't have to fill it in. But just make sure that it's recent and relevant. If it's not, then, then leave that blank. If I graduate from, I don't, I don't put what year that I even went to high school. Because if you have a, a college education, what's the assumption? You, you went to high school, all right? Or you got a GED. Somehow you got to the point to where you got a college education. All right. Um, one thing to remember is that you're in competition. Don't be hum humble. Um, but don't be dishonest, okay? If you're dishonest and you put in your resume that you've done all these amazing and great things and they hire you for the position and you're on probation for a year, which is very normal, okay? Um, and they find out that you lied on your resume, they can let you go within a day's notice, okay? So you want to qualify for the positions, 
Um, so, so keep that in mind. Don't lie about it. Don't be dishonest. But don't be so humble that your competition is running circles around you either. All right. um, always include a cover page. That's something a lot of people make mistakes on. All right. The manager is going to be able to see that cover page when they get your resume. They're going to let, you're going to let them see that not only you're interested in the position, but why you think that you're a great fit for the position. Um, that's going to stand out. Okay, because a lot of people just don't do it. They just take the easy way. It's just like my kids with an application. They take the easy route, but the competition, the good competition, is going to always include a cover page. And you can save those cover pages within your documents within the USA job site too. So you don't always have to start over. You can just tweak it, modify it to fit the different jobs that you're applying to, upload it, and you're good. Um, don't waste your time. Uh, just make sure you look at the job opportunity announcements and make sure you're qualified for the position. So uploading and building resumes, um, once you get your uh, profile built, that's going to be the next step. You want to start building and working on your resumes in order to apply for positions. All right? I wouldn't even worry about going and looking for jobs until you get your resume straight within the system, as well as any documents that you need to upload. So it allows you to store, like I said before, up to five resumes, which is really actually a lot. Um, and you can access those from anywhere. Okay, as long as you access them on your phone, you can access them you know, on your tablets, your iPads, your computers, um, you're able to get in there because you'll have a username and a password and you can access it from anywhere. Um, and then you have two choices, you can upload or build. I always recommend that you build because our managers out here are more, um, more, more familiar with the built resumes. The format is easy to read on how they build it and you're given a little bit more space and room in order to expound on your experience and your education. All right, so uploading a resume, um, you know, we talked about the traditional resume, it's one or two pages. Um, just keep in mind, you may not be able to adequately capture all your experience and education on just two pages. You may need more, and it's okay. If you wanna write it out in Word and transfer it in, into the system, you know, through PDF or Word, then you can do that, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you may need more than two pages. And then uploader resumes, um, they have to be less than three megabytes. I have seen someone, believe it or not, we had a discussion in my office the other day, that uploaded a resume that exceeded 80 pages. 80 pages, it's a book, really? I'm surprised the federal government has not yet put a size limit on the size of a resume. But it's there and we still have to go through practically the whole thing to see if they're qualified. Um, but it's definitely cumbersome. If I'm a manager, all right, if I am a selecting official and I'm sitting at my desk and I grab a resume that has eight pages, <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read it. I'll be honest with you. I don't have that kind of time. I need to fill my positions fast with the most qualified people. And if I pick up that big chunk of paper, I'm thinking some things. All right. I'm thinking, what would I get myself into if this person is willing to write a resume that's 80 pages? All right, so please don't do that. Um, and then uh, you have to save it in the following formats that are listed there. So this is what the website looks like after you build your profile. Okay, so this is my account on what it looks like. Um, at the top, you'll see that you're logged in, you know, with your name. If you need help, there's that little help button up there, and then you can do searches. Up here at the top where it says keywords and location, um, that's where you can actually search for, jo for jobs from this particular page. And then on the left hand side is the different things that you can do within your profile. All right, you can, um, you can go back to the home page, you can look at your profile, your documents, and then, um, what's that name, your username and password. You can change those things. All right, so uh, from here, you can see different jobs that you've applied for as well as the ones that you were selected for or referred to or whatever. So this is the last job that I applied to that actually got me the job here. Um, and then you can look at saved jobs. If you want, if you go out there and you find a job that you like, but you're sort of in a hurry, you can save that job and it's gonna go right in there, all right? And then you have saved search. You know, the, uh, the professional sports players, the NBA, the hockey, um, some of these stars in Hollywood, they have agents, right? Well, you're going to be no different when it comes to USA Jobs. You're going to have an agent out there for you. All right, it's an automated agent, and it's a really good tool. And the save searches, you can go out there and you can put in the criteria of the type of jobs you're interested in, 
And then every night at midnight, your agent's going to go walk the streets out there in USA Jobs, and they're going to pull these jobs for you. And they're going to put them in an email, and then they're going to send them to you. That's pretty good. That saves you a lot of time. All right? And the more you get familiar with it, the more you're going to like it. And you're going to say, wow, I don't have to go search because they know what kind of job I'm interested in. They know what kind of pay grade or pay that I need. And they know where I want to work at. And they're going to give it to you. All right? So use that tool. It's really the tool. All right. So in the, in the documents page, this is where you have your resumes. All right? So you go to documents. And at the top, you have resumes and other documents. So this is the page that it looks like for your resumes. And for me, I have a total of four that are there. The first one you can see is a PDF file. And so that's an uploaded resume. All right, You can upload all five if you want to. Or you can have a mixture of, of different types, either built or uploaded. All right, And then you can see the next three over are those that I've built within the system. The interesting thing is that here, you can't edit this one, right? Because it's a PDF file. You have to download it, put it in Word, edit it, and then upload it again. So that's why I try to encourage people not to use the uploaded uh, resumes. But here, guess what? I have that option. I can actually edit these resumes anytime that I want. Okay? And if I start out with just one and I build one, you know what the cool thing is? I can copy it. All right? And I can make another one. And then I can make another one. All right? So you don't have to start over and build each one. But you can build five different resumes for five different jobs. Okay? So keep that in mind. So when it's time and you're ready to actually upload or build a resume, this is the icon that you'll have. All right? Yours would be all blank, and this is all you're going to have. When you touch that and click on it, it's going to give you an option. You can either upload the resume or you can build a resume. So building is, once again, the preferred method. Um, it's an easy tool. It allows you to structure the resume that is easy for your HR specialist, which worked for me, to see the format and determine your qualifications relatively quick. All right, that's a good thing. All right, when they're looking at 400 resumes. All right, and they can move you to the pile of where you're going to be referred. All right, um, and then also we talked about the managers are familiar with it. Uh, it covers all area, covers all areas that should be included with a traditional res resume, such as experience, education, and references. It's all very easy, it all flows very smooth, and if you fill it out completely, you're not going to miss anything. Allows you to view, edit, duplicate, and delete stored resumes. Um, the uh, federal employees average around 5 to 10 pages. That's very common. I think my resume right now is like 14 pages. Um, but remember, the reason is, is because we're not talking about just what we do, we're talking about how great we do it. All right? Everybody does a great job. So we have to be able to showcase that because that's going to make the difference between just a normal applicant and a superstar. Um, and then I mentioned before you can access them anytime. So to build one, you're going to have to name it first. And then the next thing, um, let me see. Yeah, you're going to name it. And then um, from here, you're going to add work experience. You're just going to click on that button. And this is what your work experience looks like. All right, you're going to start at the top. And you're going to fill in all these blanks. And then you get, to get down here. You got a 5,000 character limit. Okay? So that's a lot of space. That doesn't mean take up all of it. All right? That means that, that, that's the maximum it's going to hold. If you can showcase your talents in 1,000 words, I mean 1,000 characters, then do it. All right? If you're, if, you're, if you're able to do it. If not, then use all of it. Um, the next thing is, is that you're going to um, add your education. And then you add your references. It walks you through every step. And as you're building this, it's also building it in the background so you can see it at the end. And then um, over here are the other things that you can add if it's necessary. It's not required. If you have any other job-related training, the key is job-related. If you go to Athens State and you're taking courses that are directly related to the type of job you're applying to, I would list those courses. Don't depend on your transcript to speak for you all the time. All right? Your language skills, if you speak a different language, organizations and affiliations, publications, and anything else that you want to add, you can add in there as well. All right, so that's the resumes. All right, uploading a resume is really simple. You click on upload, and it's just like anything else you've been doing for, for college and everything else. It's gonna bring up the file um, selections. You select which file, you click uh, upload, and it's there. It's that simple. All right, so with documents, you're also gonna need to upload some documents in order to ensure your application is complete. 
If your students and you're applying to a recent graduate or a Pathways uh, intern announcement, they're going to ask for your transcript. If you do not include your transcript, you're not going to be referred. And they're not going to reach out and say, hey, you forgot your transcript. All right, they're just not going to refer you because it's an incomplete package. All right, so from here, you can see that I have some documents loaded. Um, I think I got a PD-214, I got my transcript, I got a cover letter, and then I got my VA memo. All right, and then if I wanted to upload another document, I could just click on that, and it's the same thing. It's going to upload it into the system, and then you're going to be able to have access to it when you apply for the positions. Um. Which are they for the unofficial transcript or which transcript are some of them that you have to send it directly to the employee right. in order to be official? When you apply to the positions, they're asking for your unofficial transcript. The only way I get an official transcript is if it comes from the university, right? right. And it's unopened and I can open it and that becomes your official transcript. So um, you should have a copy of your transcript that's official to you and then you can just upload that into a PDF. And, we'll, and if you're selected for the position, that's what we're going to initially use in order to make the tentative job offer. But before we make a final job offer, we have to have your official transcript from the school. You have a question? Um, I, I copy and paste mine from the Athens State University um, website. The website? Yep. So I just copy and paste into a Word document and I send that. Is that good for the package to send it? It, it will work okay. um, for that. Um, we can see that you're qualified, we can see what your degree is, and we can see that it's from an accredited university. Um, so, yeah, that works, that works too. What worked for me is I uh, just pretty much hit, the, I went to my transcript in Apple State Online, and then I just pretty much click on print, and I, instead of printing it to a printer, I send it to a PDF. And so I just created a PDF, and then uploaded it in here, and that worked for me. All right, so when you click upload a document, this is the thing that's going to come up next. And it's going to ask you what document is it that you're uploading. And that's going to help with your naming convention. It's going to say, because when you apply to a position, it's going to ask you which documents you want to upload with your application. And so that's going to walk you through which ones are you actually uploading. Just make sure you check those, because we've had some people make an error, and they thought they were uploading their transcript because it said transcript, but they had uploaded something else. And so that knocks them out of competition. All right, so now you're ready to look for jobs, right? I have a question. How many years back in history, job history, do you really need to go? Uh, a rule of thumb is 10 years. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so when you look for a job, okay, these are the types of, of announcements that you're going to see. You have to become familiar with them. All right, 50% of the battle is knowing how to fight, right? The other 50% is your motivation and determination. All right, so if you look and you're able to process the announcement and and you can click on anything you want here it's not gonna hurt anything don't be afraid of it the more you know the better prepared you are to apply for that position all right so from here it talks about at the top this is a recent grad announcement um, so this is here on the arsenal that recently came out it talks about the pay the promotion potential so the, the starting salary for you would be 45,000 a year all right you're gonna start as a GS 7 all right and then you have the promotion potential to go up to a GS-12, all right? That's pretty good, all right? So coming in at a seven and going to a 12, that's really, really good. And then over here, it talks about if you wanna just go straight to apply, you can apply it. You can print, share, save, um, how to apply. You can drop that down. And then the required documents. You wanna make sure you read everything on the announcement and that way you're not missing anything. All right, any questions? There used to be a list uh, within the Resumex, the old system that we, the, the Army used to use, uh, but since they went away from the keyword search, they don't use that anymore. Your list really is defined by going into the questionnaire and the assessment and looking at that list, and it's going to give you some of the buzzwords on what they're looking for. Um, and usually, your, your assessment is broken down usually into about five sections, and the sections will each have a title to the section. One may be, you know, um, project management, one may be time management, one may be communication, one may be commu uh, customer service. Look at those, and that's sort of gonna give you an area to focus your resume on, because that's the key points that they're looking for. All right, that's a good question. Somebody else, sir? 
why only let you re, uh, make one resume searchable? Like if I see two jobs on there and I create two resumes and I want, and you can only make one resume searchable at the time of the event. And if you make that resume searchable, it might not have that information that you're trying to plot for the other job. Yeah. Now see, the thing is, is like you can build five resumes in here. And there's a couple of things within your question. So you can build five resumes. Um, one thing you can do is you can make, you can make your resume searchable. All right. Um, and if you make it searchable, what it means is if there's recruiters out there in the federal government that are looking for special skills that you have, um, then they can contact you and encourage you to apply for a position. Um, and that's what they're looking for. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, but the other thing is, I'm sorry, I think I missed part of your question. So, I, you know, when, when I applied for this one job and then I went back okay. and I put that resume with that job, so I left it searchable. But then I had another resume that I wanted to plot for another resume. I would have to make it search. When someone says that if you make one searchable, they can't see the other one. Okay, so when you apply for a job, and let's say I'm sitting at my computer tonight, and um, I'm, that my focus, my job tonight, is going to be to find a job, right? That's my permanent job for the next six hours. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to look for these jobs. And let's say I find one that's looking for a human resources specialist job, and I'm qualified for that job. And so I look at that job announcement, I look at the assessment, and then I go into my resume, and I name it HR specialist, and I copy from one I had before, and I tailor it to meet those requirements. And then I click apply to the position. When I apply to that job, it's gonna ask me very important information. Which resume do I wanna use? All right, so I'm gonna have to upload that resume. It's gonna ask me which supporting documents do I need to upload. So I need to make sure that I use the appropriate um, documents that I need to upload, such as my transcript or whatever else that the job announcement's requ requiring. And then, because it's going to take you from USA Jobs to a tool that's called Application Manager. And when you go into Application Manager, that's where you do all of that, all right? And then once I'm done with that one and I close it out, okay, it's going to pull all the information I asked it to pull and it's going to load it for that job. So then I look, I keep looking and I find another job that I want to apply for, okay? Um, and I apply for it and I make some tweaks to a resume. I copied my HR specialist one. I tweaked it. I made it, you know, tethered to that, to that job. And then from there, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use a different resume. I can continue to do that as much as I want, okay, because it's pulling that data in. Now, if you make a mistake before the closing date of the announcement, you can go in there and you can change the resume. And what's going to happen is it's going to take the last resume you loaded. Anything else before that, resume-wise, we're not even going to consider and look at. So you have some time to do that, which reminds me, don't wait till the last minute in order to apply for jobs, okay? Because sometimes the tool or the system may go down, you may have an emergency that comes up, whatever the case may be. Always apply in, in enough time, okay? Any other questions? Uh, you were mentioning not divulging information that you might be judged on. The disability section... <coughs> Do you, or I mean, is that possible to be judged on? Like, because some employers may not want to hire somebody with a disability. But some really want to hire. I'm looking for them. I yeah. So, do you say yes? Do you say no? Do you say I don't want to answer? When it comes to disabilities, I always say be honest with your disabilities. Okay. Because if, if, if you're not and you show up, then, you know, there's accommodations, there may be some additional things that, that cause some problems. Be honest with your disabilities. Any other things? You know, mine are almost done. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure we get some of the questions to the okay. panel, too. Yeah, but go ahead. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, you can for different positions. Uh, that happens to us all the time. We have different people apply. I mean, we have a person that applies continuously. It's still okay. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Some managers may get turned off about it. If you're not a good candidate for the position, they may get turned off. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you're not qualified for the position. And, and under the qualifications, sometimes if you meet four out of five of the requirements, you should just still apply. When in doubt, if you're on the edge, apply to the position. <coughs> Mr. Bradley, thank you. And we're going to continue with questions, but I want to put the panel up there and you can ask questions to any of them. I, I think one of the most important things you shared was that there are live people reviewing the resumes. Yes. 
<laughs> I mean, there's kind of a there's kind of a, a general thought out there that it's a computer generated yeah. review, yeah. but it is not. Live people. It is live you. people. Trust me, they work for me. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and uh, and we pay them very good in order to look at your resume because they're they're going to look at the same stuff you're looking at. None of it's a secret. They're going to look at the specialized experience in the announcement, and they're going to look at that assessment. All right, and they're going to determine if you're qualified. And if you're qualified, they're going to move you on. All right. Keep in mind too, the, the assessment that you fill out, it's a calculated score. Um, and if you don't score among the best qualified, when I say that, we're talking about 95 points or higher. Okay. If you don't score 95 points or higher, sometimes you won't be referred either, because we can only have referred the best qualified. And if we have 400 applicants, you know, probably 100 of them may get qualified. Uh, pushed over and referred. Very good. Thank you so much. You're that, that was wonderful. I mean, you went over some great things and tips for us. So we're going to have a panel, and you can ask questions of the panel. And so Mr. Bradley is going to be part of the panel. And for those of you who don't know them, this is Dr. Pete Lowe, who is our um, head of our logistics and supply chain management um, degree program. And I just want to share with you also that in your bio, I found some information that you started at Redstone Arsenal as an mm -hmm. intern. Yeah. Um, it didn't include the year, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, but um, he was the director of security assistance at Redstone from 2001 to 2010 before he became um, a professor for us, and we're so happy to have him at the university. And some of you may have had him and not met him, so he's here tonight. And um, he's a great advocate for students, and so I know he can be helpful if you have questions. And then also we have um, Martha Anderson, and Martha graduated from Athens in December 2015 um, with her degree in accounting. And she started her accounting career in 2014 at Semina, I never say that right. And then she moved on to SEIC, and she recently landed the position that she really wanted as an auditor with the Defense Contract Audit Association here on the Arsenal, and um, she's going to share some of her um, efforts and what she did to get the job, and um, we'll start with you. We'll start with a question on, um, and he mentioned this, that you should keep applying. Can you talk a little bit about, I'll let you start talking, and then they can ask questions, all three of them, all three of them, but talk a little bit about how many jobs you applied to before you got, got the one you wanted. A lot. <laughs> I, I can remember on top of my head, you know, how many jobs I applied, but I applied for a lot of them within the last probably two years. And one of the main tips that I have for you, because I just went through these, you know, through all of these USA jobs processes, I just got hired. I have been in my current job, my current, I call it dream job, because I was really looking for this job for a long time, uh, not even two months. Uh, so what really, work for me and what not, didn't work for me is don't upload your resume. I've, I've, I mean, I spent most of my two years that I was applying in USA Jobs uploading resumes, customizing it, having people, you know, different people looking at my resume, professional people, career services people, everybody looking at my resume and I just kept going back to it and I'm like, what am I doing wrong and what am I doing wrong? The day that I decided to create my uh, resume in USA Jobs with that really easy tool that they have, that got me the job that I have right now. So that, may, that it is, you, you, I mean, you would not believe it, it's like, you know, it's ridiculous, but that, that was the thing that gave me the job that I have. After all my efforts and stuff that I was changing and tweaking my resume here and there, and it will just never get taken, I will, it will never be referred the day that I actually created it in the tool, I got the job that I have. So, just create your resume. That's the, the best advice that I can uh, really give you guys. Um, also, uh, keywords are really, really important. Uh, and Mr. Bradley already talked about it and how important it is. You want to make sure that for the position that you are applying, of course, that you are qualified. But you know, as a student, sometimes if we don't have much experience or we have some experience, but it's not related to the field that you are working on right now. Uh, so you cannot put that. You don't. You cannot put your some keywords. You know, for example, that are in the qualifications. Sometimes you don't have that as a job experience. So what do you do in that? I mean, 
put in keywords is really one of the you know big nightmares or one of the session one of the things that you really need to spend more time on it so what i did is actually some of the qualifications in the job announcement that i applied for i didn't have uh, work experience but i had reviewed that in actually my classes so um, i graduated in accounting so there was some you know auditing uh, keywords in my announcement that i didn't have experience well guess what i went to the relevant course coursework under my education and I put them in there. So I could really get, you know, like a complete match when, you know, when they were reviewing my, my resume and everything. Like almost every, I mean, of course, I made sure that I was qualified for that position, but I can tell you that most of the keywords in that announcement were in my resume. And they were not all because of my experience. They were also part of because I had taking the, that course work in every state and I put it in there. So you don't necessarily uh, feel like you, if you don't have it as a work experience and you know, you're screwed and your resume is not gonna exactly match, well there's other areas in your um, resume that you can actually put that, you know, if you have it. Wouldn't that be the same, um, Dr. Peeplo, even for logistics and contracting? I mean. A lot of times they don't have the experience in those two areas, yeah, but so you've gotten it in the class. Yeah, and it's difficult. A lot of times that's what students run into. They have, yeah. they lack that mm -hmm. functional experience. But as, uh, as Lynn said, that's where it gets down into the narratives. I want to read how you're going to make my job better. I've had, I've had instances where students have said, well, you know, all I've ever done is uh, worked at Chick-fil-A or worked at The Gap. Well, if you've done that, you have financial management experience, managed inventory, if, even if you're an assistant uh, shift leader, you've managed personnel. Uh, a lot of it is translating what you may think is insignificant and being able to translate it to the duties that, that Lynn was talking about of, of any particular position. So don't, what you should never do is dismiss any of your experience because maybe the pay you received and instead, look at exactly what you were doing. And, and again, I think, uh, as I said, I have an uh, individual. She was one of your uh, peers for many years. We constructed a resume for her. And I think she's now, she's only been out here four or five years. She's already at 12, going on 13. And started out exactly sitting where you're at. Had done nothing but a bank teller. I see she was a bank teller. And and get Old Navy and an uh, assistant ship leader at Chick-fil-A. So where do you find the best language? That's just the language. Let me share something interesting with you, and, and Lynn yes. kind of touched on this. Uh, research shows <coughs> reviewers of your resume, on average, will have six seconds before they make a decision whether to read any further. And when they looked at this quantitative uh, eye tracking data, there were really four main areas that they spent that six seconds looking on. Your name, where you're currently working, your previous, and your education. From that, they're going to go into then and make a decision whether to look any further. And that's where, as, as he said, I want to see in that, for example, let's say it's an inventory management position or an accounting position. Um, I want to see something you've done well in the area of either managing money or an accounting position or financial management position or in terms of, it, let's say it's an inventory management position. Uh, the concepts, whether you're managing helicopter engines or um, t-shirts, some of the same principles are in play. So, it's, it's being able to codify that in language that really can, can be uh, relatable to the position you're applying for. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's... It does. It, it, it does. It, it's all relevant. You know, one of the fallacies that, that uh, I've seen in the past is, uh, I've used this term, the, the, the slinging mud against the wall approach. People put everything they've ever done from birth into a, a resume and then expect the reader to discern what's garbage and what's gold. And as I said, when I see that, I'm trying to do it. Next question. You mentioned um, that you put your resume up and other recruiters will be able to see it. So how many resumes have you put out? You 
make all of them searchable, um, but I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of anyone being contacted by a recruiter. And I have never seen anyone get a job using that method. Um, you're welcome to do it. I, I would assume that there's someone out there looking, um, or they wouldn't put it there. But I've never seen anyone actually get the payoff of doing it. We couldn't hear the question. What? It's about putting the resume out there to make it searchable uh, for recruiters that are out there looking in USA Jobs. Um, they, they, they will mostly do that if it is a very, very, very unique skill that you have, especially when it comes to working overseas. A second language, like an Arabic language, they would be very apt to, to contact you. But I, I don't know of anyone that's ever been able to capitalize on that method. I see a lot of jobs on there. Um, a lot of them say that they require two or three years of DOD related experience. Um, if you qualify for those jobs other than that DOD related experience, how can you obtain those jobs? You know, there's, when you, and it's really important that you ask that question because when you go and you're looking for jobs on USA Jobs, on the top left hand side, there's, uh, there's two small buttons that you need to pay attention to. One of them is if you're a current federal employee and you're looking for jobs, the other one is for the private sector, such as yourselves. All right, you need to make sure you're clicking on that one. When you click on that one, that's called a de delegated examining unit announcement. And that means it's open to the, the whole public to apply to these positions. And when you apply to those types of positions, those are written um, in terms of any experience. So uh, it, it wouldn't matter if you're getting it in the federal government, in the military, uh, or in the private sector, or anywhere else. As long as you meet those experience requirements, um, then you should be fine with applying for the position. Usually what you'll see is they're looking for specialized experience um, of, of one year doing those types of tasks. It's not common that you'll see two or three years. It's usually just one year. Um, so when you look at those, try to try to determine if that is something that you need and then apply for the position. Sometimes after you apply for a position, it takes you through a series of questions. Yes. Um, you know, one, you have a bachelor's degree, and then the next one may be, do you have a master's degree? All of those questions, you're not towards the top on those answers? Does that mean you don't qualify? Well, there's a couple of sections within the assessment that you fill out. When you click apply, it's going to tell you to take this assessment. Um, and some of those questions at the beginning, they just want to make sure from the very beginning that you're qualified. And there's sometimes different ways that you can qualify for the position. You can sometimes qualify for the position based on your veteran's preference or status. You can qualify for positions off your experience. And then you can also qualify for positions based off of your education. So it really de depends on the type of job that you're applying for and the level of experience or education that's required. So you have that first section that talks about your qualifications. Then you get into some routine questions about what your experience is at performing certain tasks. Um, and those usually include an action word at the beginning, you know, um, solve the problems along, you know, logistics management lines or something along those, those, those cases. Um, the interesting thing and a thing that I really don't like about the system is if you sort of, we call it screening out, if you screen out yourself, yourself at the beginning because you don't meet these requirements, it still allows you to go through the whole process, all right? And then it, it will still even file it with us, but then it's going to come back with a code that you're not qualified. Keep in mind that when you have applied to a federal position, remember it has a closing date. My office is responsible for getting that referral list to the manager within 14 days. Two weeks. Two weeks is a long time when you're looking for a job, right? All right. Well, then management has, uh, on an average, 30 days to make a selection. So now we're a month and a half into the selection process. Then they send it back to us. Then we have seven days to contact you in order to make a job offer. So don't get discouraged because time's ticking, all right? There, there have been times when I've applied for jobs, when I was you know, similar to you looking for a new job, changing my career, where I applied to jobs and they call me months later and say, you know, we'd like to interview you for this job. I'm like, I don't remember applying to this job. <laughs> um, and that's how I got my first job in the federal government was someone called me up and said, hey, I'd like to interview you, you got time? I'm like, well, what job is this? 
um, I don't have, I was at home, you know, in my PJs probably, um, unemployed. And so I said, what job is this? And I said, can I call you back in 10 minutes? I hung up, I went through my stuff, I found it, I laid it out on my table, and I was ready to go. I called him back up, he said, I just got one question. Um, what makes you any different than any other candidate? Next day I got the job, okay? So don't give up, it does take time. Um, and don't think that you need to get into the federal service um, making a lot of money to begin with. I'm here to tell you, if you go in with that attitude, I was a veteran. Um, I was a first sergeant of armored cavalry troop, responsible for a lot of stuff. Um, but I quickly found out that my ego and what I think I'm worth is not what I'm truly worth in the federal government. All right, but getting my foot in the door, okay, is is just the beginning. Because if you get your foot in the door, no matter what grade, you can move pretty fast. Okay, I'm just here to tell you. Um, I came in in, in 2008 as a GS7. Okay, and it's not me bragging. I just want if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm not a, a genius by any means, but today I'm a GS14. Okay, so you can move very quick within the system. You just got to get your foot in the door. That's it. So taking a GS3, I got three interns that took a GS3, they're dynamite, I can already tell. But in, in probably four years, they're gonna be GS12s. You gotta start somewhere, right? So don't give up. And I think just going back to your question that you had about the different selections, I don't think that picking the top um, selection is a bad thing because some of these um, announcements have um, like, they can hire either a G, at the GS7 level or a GS9. So that's why they have the question, because if you have a bachelor's degree, you're gonna get a GS7 and not a GS9. So that is also to let them know in which, uh, which I guess, GS level pay scale, you know, you're gonna fall into. Sure, that's good. Let me add one thing to what Lynn said, that um, during your initial period, people aren't gonna look to see whether you can split the ad. We're going to see whether you come to work on time, whether you get along with people, whether you work without being told to do something, you come in late all the time, are you hard to find? I mean, that's really what's going to determine your ascension in any organization. So as Lynn said, coming in, generally all you want is a chance to show somebody what you can do. And that's what they want to see. I mean, we have rocket science positions, but these aren't rocket science positions. These are uh, positions that all of us can be trained to do. So again, organizations are going to look to see, are you someone they can invest in? And, and as I said, you, you, you may do well in an interview, but over the course of a year, they will see how you're going to function in the organization. Guys, it does take time. The application process takes time. The job, the job that I got, I applied for it since the beginning of May, and I got, um, you know, contacted in August. So it does take a long time. I say it depends on the job. If you're looking for project management positions, put it up front, the very front. The sooner you mention that, the quicker a manager's going to put it to the side to want to interview with you. Because PMP certifications cost us money in the federal government, and it costs us time too to get people certified. So if you've already come to us with that certification, it's going to make it that much easier. So list it. Even if you're applying to a job that doesn't require it, there's a place in there where you can put your certifications. Place it in there. It's a good share this with <clears throat> share this with Sir Lynn yesterday. That <clears throat> I'm not a fisherman. My son-in-laws are, and I, mm -hmm. I've noticed from them when they fish, they they throw a line in all the time. They don't just throw it in one time and then bring it in and say we're going home. They're constantly throwing them in there. And even when they catch a fish, they may not necessarily keep it. They may throw it back. And I would I would use that kind of as a, a metaphor or analogy or 
looking for a career with the federal government. There's nothing, just because you apply for a job doesn't mean you have to take it if it's offered. But I can guarantee you will never be offered a job you don't apply for. And what you can find in a lot of instances, it's really hard sometimes to uh, just tell from them, uh, from the uh, three or four cent vignettes, just what constitutes a position. And when you uh, talk to the organization or the hiring official, you may find out, hey, this is a great job with a lot of long-term opportunity. And so that's why I encourage students, apply all the time, as many jobs as you see. And again, don't worry about the starting salary, because I don't know anybody that's planning on staying at that starting salary. You just want a chance to come in and show them what you can do. And I think with that attitude, as Lynn said, he's got some GS3s right now, which I'm not sure what that starting salary that's, is. Uh, that's 22000 a year right now. And a GS12 is what? Oh, that's, you're looking at 70. You see, he already can. He already has identified people that have come in, and I bet you at GS3, what are they doing? Just clerical type things? Clerical type work. That's it. Learning. What you're doing is you're learning, and, and just like he said, show up on time, stay motivated, don't cause problems, and do what we ask you to do. That's it. And you can go places. Really, you can. You can provide great, great. Um, you can provide really, really good salary and benefits to your family. I, I give an example to you. Uh, the president or the board of trustees of Athens State is a uh, woman. Her name is Kathy Dickens. Uh, Kathy Dickens is, uh, she retired from the federal government about three years ago as the deputy commander of AMCOM. The highest, not just the highest female position on AMCOM, the highest civilian position on AMCOM. She started out as a GS2 clerk type. Went to Athens State in the evening to get her degree. That was back before you had distance learning and everything. And uh, now she's a senior vice president over at Colson. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, I certification. Can you talk up a little bit so we can hear the question? Oh. Yeah. I'm in the ACM program. You know, we have um, we have two main organizations out here um, that deal with acquisition. We have Army Contracting Command Headquarters, which is stationed out here on the Arsenal, and then we have uh, the Redstone Arsenal Army Contracting Command, and they're both very large organizations, and they do a lot of hiring. My uh, one of my branches actually services both of those organizations, and one thing that they do every year, um, or they're planning to do every year, they did last year is they hired 100 interns, 100 recent graduates um, that met the requirements of, um, of the position. And the interesting thing is, is you may have a bachelor's degree and it may be in, I don't know, geology or something like that. And you can have that degree and it has nothing to do with contracting, all right? But if you meet the requirements of the position, which requires you to have 24 semester hours of financial management classes, you can still apply and be selected for that type of position. But the key is, is that for those positions, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, uh, I'm not aware of any that are willing to, um, or that have qualifications that say, you know, certifications. It's truly a bachelor's degree that, at the minimum that you have to have. And you have to be a recent graduate within the last two years. Well, this program requires you to have a bachelor's degree. Oh, then. The, many, but whether it's voluntary or not. Okay. But then it sounds like that, that would fit the bill as long as you have those 24 semester hours. So, there, so we're already starting to work that program. So, you know, just as an inside scoop, you know, I'm not giving you anything that the, the federal public, I mean, the entire public won't know about soon, is that they're going to be hiring probably about 25 more jobs this year. Okay. So keep that in mind if, if you're going to be graduating. It's going to be recent graduates only that, that they'll take. Um, it's a contracting specialist job. And it'll be um, under recent grads, and it'll start out the, at the seven with a target of eleven. And I'll tell you, contracting command is always filling positions. Um, so 
definitely keep an eye out on that. And the same thing with your summer intern positions too. Yeah. How long, okay, when you apply for that process, how long does it take before they make, make the determination of when they're gonna do the hiring? Uh, when, when they're going through a large hiring action like that, they usually have a structured training program that's gonna have a start date, and that's the date that they want all of their applicants or you know, new appointees to come on at one time. So for us, we had a, a, a one month window that they were willing to bring people on board. So even though they, you apply, you know, uh, they interview, they select you, you still have to go through some hoops. We call them uh, pre-screening. We have to make sure that you have a you know, security clearance, that there's no derogatory stuff. Uh, we have to make sure everything's in the right order before we actually contact you with a start date. And sometimes those start dates under this type of program can be you know, 30 or 60 days out. Um, just because we're trying to get so many people to get through those hoops before we start a class. So it could take a while sometimes. Any other questions? I just want to ask your opinion about this. Um, sometimes when there are minimum qualifications, I have suggested to students that in their cover letters, because I do encourage them to write cover letters, to write, I meet or exceed the minimum qualifications for this job because of the following, and list those things that qualify them for the job. Do you feel like that's helpful for the government jobs too? Yeah, it's definitely helpful um, because once again, you're showcasing your talents in your cover letter. That's the first thing that they're going to see before they get your resume. Um, so they're going to be able to see that that stands out because once again, not a lot of people do cover letters. So that's going to make you stand out. And then those that do cover letters, are they able to showcase their talents and their experience and their education, you know, really quick? Because if I see that, I can't help but turn and start looking at the resume. All right, so please do that. Yeah, the, um, when you talked about having the five courses to qualify for those positions, I did sh share that with the students that I thought they should list those courses in that cover letter. Yes. That way it makes it easy for the person that's reviewing to find it just like that. It does. Make Whatever it we can do to make it easy for you, yes. right? <laughs> that does make it easy, and it, gives, it, 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 it makes it easy on you if you think about it, because if, if it's, if, if, if everything is there and it's all in order, we're going to process it as quickly as we can. And you're going to end up in front of the manager, uh, at least your resume will, to be considered. Um, and Because sometimes when, you, when, it's, when it's sort of on the bubble, well, I'm not sure if this person's qualified or not, sometimes they lean the way of, okay, let's just you know, send it to manager. But sometimes, you know, it's human, humans that are doing this. There's no science to it. Sometimes it's subjective and they say, well, they're not qualified and, um, there's no gray area, they are or they aren't, and they're not qualified. So try to put it up front if you can. Now when we upload documents in our application, and say we do the resume builder, we have a cover letter. Mm -hmm. When we upload it and you guys put it together, I guess our cover letter is always gonna go on top of the resume that we build. It comes to, to us in two files, in two separate files, and it's all an automated system. Uh, for us, it's called uh, selection. Uh, it's called USA Staffing. Is the program that runs behind USA Jobs. And anything that you put in your file, we're going to get. But what we there's some things that we don't send to management right away. Um, uh, like your transcripts won't go to management right away. Sometimes it just depends on the type of position. But if you have a cover letter, it's going to go. And if you have a resume, it's going to go. Um, and you know, I I, I do plenty of hiring actions myself. Um, and I always look at the cover letter first, and then I look at the resume. If we've been making presidents lists, things lists, things of that nature, is that good to put on a resume? Heck yeah, it's good. Yeah. Heck yeah. I put all my leadership and volunteer experience in the additional information section because there's not any specific session in USA Jobs to put that, so I just put it in the within the additional information section. I just name it, you know, uh, leadership experience and then volunteer experience. Yeah, they mentioned it's, it's, it's competitive, and, and I'm trying to understand why I need to hire you versus the 50 other people I'm looking at. And one of the biggest mistakes that you all make is lack of attention to detail. What I mean by that, when I look at a cover letter or a resume that has misspelled words, inconsistent punctuation, capitalization that shouldn't be capitalized, incomplete sentences, what that tells me is that on something as important as a resume for you to get a job, that you're okay with giving me a document like this, 
What are you going to do when I hire you? I'm going to have to follow behind you in your work. And it's simply a function of attention to detail. Look at it, have somebody else look at it. And you know, it, it's, uh, when I point these out, students say, oh, man, how did I miss it? Well, I don't know, but somebody else didn't. And those are the little things that wind up separating those that get selected from those that don't. Because again, there's a subtle message there. I know right now it's taking, what, two months to get an interim security clearance? the government, is there a way to get that before applying, or do you have to get it through the organization? Yeah, an interim is a lot faster. Um, Mine was one week. Yeah. Um, but for a secret clearance, um, you're going to be looking at 60 days. Um, I have some that we still can't bring on board, um, and it's been six months. So if you have derogatory information and they have to do additional security screenings and investigations and um, interviews, it's going to take even longer. But the government's not going to be willing to pay, because that costs money, and it costs a lot of money. All right, they're not going to be willing to do that for applicants. They're going to do that for appointees. All right, and so they're not, they're not going to do that beforehand. They just won't. And government is no different, following on, on um, what Dr. Piplo was saying, uh, government is no different to any other job in that they also focus on your soft skills. So you want to make sure to highlight in your resume, you know, that you are able to write and that you are able to, you know, speak to different people, you know, communicate verbally and in writing is very, very important. And also com communication is just like a huge thing. One of the things that I did, and I'm, I'm not sure if it, it worked with my uh, case, but I think it may have, is I went to LinkedIn. I have my LinkedIn um, profile, and I looked for uh, one agency that I particularly was looking at for an auditing job. Um, I went and looked at the agency, and I found out a recruiter, and I sent him an, a message. He did not reply to my message or communicate it to me. However, he looked at my profile, and I could see that because you know how you get notifications of people looking at your profile? So I was able to, kind of like pop up, you know? And right after that is when I got a call and I got referred right after that. So I'm not sure if that helped me, but I think that may have, you know, put my resume, you know, in the spot. Like, okay, let me look at this person's resume, kind of thing. So communication is just, be, I mean, just make your way, you know, there's different things that you can do. Take a look at LinkedIn, you know, uh, use like all the tools that career services have, which they are really amazing. I got to know about the job that I have because of them. I had already graduated, you know, four months after, and I was still getting the notifications from them about the different jobs. And then, you know, Laura Allen sent me this notification, and then I applied right, right for it. So. That's a great point because you know, I've said it a couple times now. Uh, what are you going to do to make my job easier? If, if, um, if I were to ask you, well, why did you apply for this job? And the answer is, well, I need a job. Well, you know, there's 200,000 other people out there that need a job. What I need to know, what are you going to do to make my job easier? And knowledge of the organization, be able to, to just articulate basic things, such as uh, if you're looking at a private contractor out there that, well, I saw that you just won this contract with so-and-so. Uh, I know you're going to have some, I mean, just a, it doesn't have to be in-depth, but just a, of a functional knowledge that you can be able to translate even if it's just academic background to how you can fit into this organization and how you can make and, and again part of it is just selling yourself but not overselling yourself and there, there's a fine line there but he made a very good point do your research on the company and the organization that you're applying to and use that information in your cover letter hey i've noticed x y and z i see that your mission is this and your values um, also rely, uh, align with my personal values in my life. I mean, you really have to look at the full picture. Um, and that goes a long way. I mean, it really does. Remember that your resume gets you the interview. Your interview gets you the job. So I have went as far as to um, apply for positions that I had no intent on taking. Um, and it will frustrate managers sometimes. But what that did was, is I know that I could do the job, and I know that I would be referred to the job because I've done it before. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to uh, to shape and refine my interview skills. 
right? Um, even the job that I have now, our regional director sits with us, and I applied to a job in Mobile, Alabama, which there was no way I was going to take. That's too close to my family. <laughs> I'm just honest. All right. um, but I was able to, uh, to do the interview, um, and I wanted to come to Redstone, and I knew that's where I really wanted to come to um, because I like to fish, and there's some great fisheries around here. Um, so uh, knowing that this regional director also covers Redstone in the region, I was able to interview for that job, and actually I got selected for the position. And unfortunately, I had to turn it down, and she understood, you know, the reasoning behind it. But that gave me a connection, all right, and that gave me a relationship because down the road they had two jobs here, GS13 and GS14. I applied for both of those, expecting to get the 13. Well, I got told, well, you didn't get the 13. I was like, oh darn, that sucks. And I knew I didn't expect to get the 14. But she said, but we have something better to offer you, which is the 14. So developing those relationships is really, really critical. Um, shaking hands, meeting people. You know, a lot of people say you're just sucking up. I don't know if I call it sucking up for, you know, a job that's going to take care of your family and yourself. I don't consider it that. I consider it using your skills necessary to network in order to get your dream job. And there are different recruiters that come to Athens all the time, so take advantage yeah. of that, like go there and actually meet people, shake hands and all that, like everything that you'll see. Ask for a business card, keep in touch, send an email, little things. Do y'all have any more questions or you want to discuss anything else? Uh, we've run over a little bit, but wow, <laughs> I mean really. So many good tips, so much great information. Let me leave you with one. I had an uh, individual <laughs> just recently graduated from Alabama. And it wasn't in the, the federal government field, but this is going to touch on an area that many of you ask about, and that is, what do I ask for in terms of salary? What, what do I do when that question comes up? And what I posed to her was, I said, do you want to go to this organization? She said, I really do. I said, why? She said, well, I like their values, you know, everything I've read about them, they're a good organization. This is somewhere I want to be. So I said, well, rather than define a number, why don't you turn it around this way and instead explain that I just want a chance in your place. I want a chance in your organization. And I know that you're a good organization. And because of that, all I ask you is that you treat me fairly. You don't know me from anybody else out there, but I trust you that you're going to be fair to me in terms of a starting salary. They started her out at the highest rate in the highest band ever for that organization. So again, if you're, if you're wanting to become part of the organization, your starting salary really is a moot point. You don't plan to stay there anyways. But you can take sometimes those questions that you don't know a number for and be able to translate it. Because again, if you want to go to work there, you are you have some implied trust. And again, when you kind of put it that way to them, it, it, it shows right off the bat you're wanting to become part of them rather than just wanting a job. Thank you. So does the uh, USA jobs uh, the science ask how much starting value? They don't ask. Okay. Well, we thank you all. The information thank has been wonderful. Much. So many wonderful tips. And um, I appreciate all of you coming. If you have any of your um, cover letters now that you want us to review or, or help you with, call us. We'll try to help you with those. Because, wow, that's one of the most important things tonight was that cover letter is important for USA Jobs, right? And that build the resume in USA Jobs is um, more effective. Thank you for coming so much. We have another workshop next week. Look on, um, we'll be sending out some information about it. It's on the main campus. Thank you. You have to be